wide. Best I ever saw. Well, thank you, young man. Aren't you Bob Cratchit's youngest? Yes, sir. Wouldn't you like to give it a try? Yes, but, but I can't, sir. That's no excuse. But I. Come on, up you go. Hang on. Whoa. Woohoo! Whoa. 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 Whee! All right. Whoa. Good evening, Mr. Cratchit. Oh, boy. A bit cold in here. I see Scrooge is as tight as ever with his money. You know Ebenezer. He counts every penny. He just can't bear to see one go up the chimney. I'll bet he's warm, though. It's okay, if it's for himself. Good evening, nephew. Merry Christmas, Uncle. Bah! Humbug. Christmas? A humbug? You really don't mean that. I surely do. Merry Christmas. Ha! Tomorrow's Christmas and Bob here will be wanting the whole day off. Just another excuse to pick my pockets. After all, it is Christmas. Everyone will be home enjoying the day with their families. What right do you have to be merry? You're poor enough. There's no reason for you to be merry. If that's so, Uncle, what right have you to be morose? You're rich enough. You should be very merry. Bah! Humbug! I've come to invite you to Christmas dinner with us, Uncle. I hope you can make it this year. Keep Christmas in your own way, and I'll keep it in mine. Keep it? But you don't keep it. Let me leave it alone, then. What good has it ever done for you? There are lots of things from which I might have derived good and not profited. Christmas among them. But I have always thought of Christmas time as a good time. A kind, forgiving, charitable, and pleasant time. God bless it. Let me hear another word from you, sir, and you'll celebrate Christmas by losing your job. Don't be mad, Uncle. We would welcome you at our table tomorrow if you change your mind. I think not. Have it your way, Uncle. Good evening. Scrooge and Marley, I believe. Have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley has been dead seven years now. In fact, it was seven years ago this very night. I have no doubt his kindness is represented by his surviving partner. During this festive season, Mr. Scrooge, it is the wish that we make a slight donation for the poor and destitute, who suffer greatly at this time. Why? Are there no prisons? Oh, yes, sir. Plenty of presents. Oh. I was afraid from what you said that something had happened to stop them from their useful course. But they scarcely furnish Christian cheer. A few of us are endeavoring to raise money to help the poor with food and a way to keep warm. We chose this time because it's keenly felt and abundance rejoices. What shall I put you down for? Nothing. You wish to be anonymous? I wish to be left alone. I see, sir. Merry Christmas and good evening. Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day To save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray I suppose you'll be wanting all day off tomorrow? If it's convenient, sir. It's not convenient and it's not fair. Don't you think me ill-used when I pay a day's wages for no work? It's only once a year. A poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. I suppose you must have the whole day off, but be here all the earlier the next morning. Woohoo! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas to all! Woohoo! Holy infant so tender and
monster. Ah! Humbug. It's all humbug. I I won't believe it. Who, who, who's there? Who's there? I say. Who, who are you? Ask me who I was. Who were you? In life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. Marley? You don't believe in me? I don't. Why do you come here? Merciful, dreadful apparition, why do you trouble me? Do you believe in me or not? I do. I do. But why do spirits walk the earth, and why do they come to me? I must. It is required that a condemned spirit after death is doomed to wander through the earth and witness what it cannot share, but might have shared and turned to happiness. Why are you encumbered by chains? This chain was forged in life. I made it link by link and yard by yard. I girded it of my own free will, and my own free will I wore it. Would you know the weight and length of the strong coil you bear yourself? It was as full and heavy and as long as this seven Christmas Eves ago. You have labored on it since. It is a ponderous chain. Tell me more, old Jacob Marley. Speak comfort to me, Jacob. I have none to give, nor can I tell you what I would. But you are always a good man of business, Jacob. Business? Mankind was my business. The common welfare was my business. Charity and mercy were all my business. At this time of year, I suffer most. Why did I walk through crowds of fellow beings with my eyes turned down and never raise them to that blessed star which led the wise men to a poor abode? Hear me, my time is nearly gone. I will, but don't be hard upon me. I have sat invisible beside you many a day. I am here tonight to warn you that you still have a chance of escaping my fate. You are always a good friend, Jacob. You will be haunted by three spirits. Is that the chance you mentioned? It is. I think I'd rather not. Without their visit, you cannot hope to shun the path I tread. Expect the first tomorrow, when the clock tolls one. I think I'd rather not. Expect the second when the clock tolls two, and the third when the clock tolls three. Look to see me no more! Humbug. Who, who, who are you? Did Jacob Marley not tell you of me? The first apparition. I am the ghost of Christmas past. What past? Your past. Why do you haunt me? Your reclamation. Take heed. Rise and walk with me. I am mortal. Bear but a touch of my hand, and you shall be upheld more than this.
Good heavens! I was bred in this place. Your lip is trembling. I was a boy here. Do you recollect the way? Remember it? Why, I could walk it blindfolded. Strange you've forgotten it for so many years. These are but shadows of things that have been. They have no consciousness of us. The school is not quite deserted. A solitary child, neglected by his friends, is left there still. I know. I wish, but it's too late now. What pains you? Nothing. Nothing. There were people singing a Christmas carol at my door last night. I should have given them something. That's all. Let us see another Christmas. Do you know this place? Know it? I was an apprentice here. It's old Fezziwig. Bless his heart, it's Fezziwig alive again. Yo ho, Ebenezer, Dick. Fezziwig, it's old Fezziwig that I apprenticed under. Your master. Yes, and there's Dick Wilkins. He was very much attached to me. Poor Dick. Dear, dear. Yo ho, my boys. No more work today. Christmas Eve. Dick Ebenezer. Haley ho. Clear away, lad. Let's have lots of room here. Mr. Fezziwig, sir, you're a wonderful master. A wonderful master. <laughs> Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. A small gesture to make these silly folks so full of gratitude. Small. He has spent but a few pounds of your mortal money. Three or four, perhaps. Is that so much that he deserves praise? It isn't that spirit. He has the power to render us happy or unhappy, to make our service a pleasure of toil. Say that his power lies in words and in things so slight and insignificant that it is impossible to add and count them up. The happiness he gives as is the happiness he gives is as great as if it cost a fortune. Then what is the matter? Nothing in particular. Something, I think. No. No, I should like to be able to say a word or two to my clerk just now. That's all. Hmm. My time grows short. Quickly now. Haven't you tormented me enough? I only show the past. What I promised you. I had forgotten her. Don't they dance beautifully? I would have married her if only... Can you love me, Ebenezer? I bring no dowry into my marriage, only me, only love. 
It's not currency that you can buy and sell with, but we can live with it. Can you? You should have held me to it. I was young. I did love you. We've never lied to one another. May you be happy in the life that you have chosen. Goodbye. No, no, it was not meant that way. You cannot change now what you did not change then. I am your mistakes, Ebenezer Scrooge. All of the things that you could have done and did not. Show me no more. No more. I do not wish to see it. Remove me from this place. I can't bear it. I told you that these were the shadows of things that have been. Leave me. Halt me no longer. Take me back. The second spirit? Yes, the ghost of Christmas present. Walk with me. But I am not dressed. Grab hold. We're leaving. Where are we going? Bob Cratchit's. Cratchit's? You did want to talk to him. Don't worry, Scrooge. You won't have to. Shouldn't be much of a trip. How far off can it be? A world away. At least that far. This is the way. The stars in the sky Look down where he lay the little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. Time for sleep, all of you. Christmas tomorrow. How did our little tiny Tim behave? As good as gold. He told me coming home that he hoped the people saw him in the church. Since he was a cripple, it might be good for them to remember on Christmas Day who made the lame to walk and the blind to see. He's such a good boy. Oh my goodness, the wind! Hurry! My dear, to Mr. Scrooge, the founder of the fest. The founder of the feast, indeed. If he were here, I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast upon. Hardly hospitable is what I'd say. Scrooge, they'd say a lot more if they could see you. Oh, they would, would they? Well, I might have a word for them. You're here to listen. Oh, yes. All right. My dear, Christmas Eve. It should be Christmas Eve when one drinks to the health of such a stingy, hard, unfeeling man as him. And nobody knows that better than you, dear. I only know that on Christmas one should be charitable. I'll drink to his health for your sake, not his. I have no doubt he'll be very merry and happy. We must be happy for him. Where's Tim? Tim? Shh! He's asleep and needs his rest, if he's to have a chance of getting well. I didn't know about Tiny Tim. Will he live? He's very ill. But you haven't told me. Will he live? If he's to die, he'd better do it and decrease the surplus population. Erase those words from your thoughts. It may be that in the eyes of heaven you are more worthless and less fit to live than the millions like this poor man's child. Is there no happiness in this Christmas present? There is. Then take me there. It's at the home of your nephew. No. Then there is none. But the first spirit gave me more. She was Christmas past. 
She had a lifetime to choose from. I only have this one day. My time grows short. We must go. You are the third spirit? The, the ghost of Christmas yet to come? I have much to show you. Come. No, I don't know much about it. Just that he died. When did he die? Last night, I believe. I thought he'd never die. What has he done with his money? Who knows? He was a miserable SOB. He's been dead for half his life. <laughs> <laughs> it's likely to be a very cheap funeral. Suppose we make up a party and volunteer. I don't mind going to Fletcher's provided, but I gotta be fed. <laughs> Who is it? Ain't he a picture? If he is, it ain't a happy one. Just a miserable SOB. It's such a shame. Tiny Tim was taken at such a young age. Yes, he was such a nice, high-spirited boy. His parents loved him very much. If only he could have had the operation. It would have spared him from such an early death. Why him? I guess his parents couldn't manage to save enough for it. Sure is a shame. I feel real sorry for Tiny Tim. But why was the other fellow hated so? Was that other fellow me? It was. I will change my way, spirit. I promise I will change. Spirit, will that not alter my fate? Please tell me, will it change my fate? I will change my ways. I'll be more caring towards my fellow man and not so worried about my wealth. I will change. I will. <sighs> lad! I say, lad! Yes, sir? What's today? Today? Why, it's Christmas Day. I haven't missed it, then. The spirits did all that in one night. Of course, they can do anything. Hello, my fine fellow. Hello. Do you know the butcher on the next street around the corner? Yes, very well. Do you know if they've sold the big turkey hanging in the window? The one about as big as me? Yes, that's the one. It's hanging there now. It is? Good. Go and buy it. What? Go and buy it, and tell him to bring it here so I can tell him where to take it. Come back with a butcher and I'll give you half a shilling. Come back in less than two minutes and I'll give you half a crown. I'll send it to Bob Cratchit anonymously. He won't know who sent it. It's twice the size as Tiny Tim. What a Christmas dinner it will make. Back already? What a turkey! Here's your half-crown. You can't carry that all the way to Camden Town. Here's money for a cab. Make sure it gets there. And for you, my good man.
Hello there. Hello, sir. How do you do? I hope you succeeded yesterday. It was very kind of you to stop by and see me. Mr. Scrooge? Yes, that's my name, and I fear it may not be pleasant to you. May I ask your pardon, and may you have the goodness to add this to your good work? My dear Mr. Scrooge, are you serious? Quite, and a great many back payments are included in it. I don't know what I could say to such generosity. Say nothing. Accept it and come and see me. Will you come and see me? I will. Thank you, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, sir. Now, which way is that nephew's house? Christmas.